What is going on everyone? Welcome to building your very first iOS app in 2023. We're going to be building this app that you see here. It's called Emoji Lovers. And this video is for absolute beginners. So you don't know what Xcode is. You don't necessarily know how to write code. We're going to build your very first app. And what this app basically does, as you can see here, is we have a obviously this uh, rendering of a emoji here. And we're able to pick a different emoji from this picker down here. So I think it's pretty awesome. Everyone loves emojis. We're going to get started from scratch. So no prior knowledge needed. Get pumped. Drop a like down below. And let's do it. Let's build our very first iPhone app. All right, so let's get into things. First things first, we're gonna need an application called Xcode. This is basically where we're going to write all of our code. This is where you can build and run your app, see what you've actually built. It is known as a IDE, otherwise known as a integrated development environment totally free. You can grab it in the Mac App Store. Luckily, we've already got it. It is a little large if you have yet to install it, so just bear with it. Um, since we already got it, we'll close uh, our App Store here. I'll launch Xcode right here, and we'll get started. So you'll begin with this menu, and what we want to select here is an option to create a new Xcode project. Now, not to worry, I'm going to do my best to explain all the kind of different screens in Xcode, but I will preface and say it is rather complex, so we are going to make our main focus to build something and explain the code, and not really focus too, too much on Xcode. So cool, that said and out of the way, on this screen we can select from a variety of templates. At the top here we can choose to make an iOS app, a Mac app, an app for the Apple Watch. We want to stick with iOS and pick the app template here. Now up top we can give this a product name, i.e. our project name. So I'm going to call our app Emoji Lover. Now for the team, you can leave this blank. No team is perfectly okay. Now if you have an LLC set up or you know, a personal account set up with Apple, uh, which is a paid account, you don't need that at all to begin. You can add that there. Next up, we have our organization identifier. This is usually a website backwards. So for example, if you have example.com, this would be com.example. And you can see right below it, it basically for your bundle ID sticks your project name at the end. For interface, we're going to stick with Swift UI, which is the newer way to build out your user interfaces, basically everything you see. And Swift is the language that Swift UI supports, hence the prefix name of Swift. So I'll go and save this, and I will toss it onto my desktop, perhaps, and we'll jump into Xcode. So let me close this right panel, and I will expand the window here. And let me actually full screen this as well, and let's jump into things. So cool, so in Swift UI, you will come to a screen like this whenever you create a new project. On the right-hand side, this area with the iPhone, this is known as a canvas. Essentially, this is a live preview of your code as you're building out your application. In the middle here, of course, we have our actual code where we will write things out. And as you obviously get larger projects, you'll separate your code into multiple files and there's a whole file structure that you can organize stuff into. We'll just be working in this single file to keep things uh, rather simple today. On the left hand side, you have these files where in the content view file, but there are some other files here and we're going to ignore these since we just want to build our own app today. And this template got everything set up to a minimum uh, place where we can actually start building. At the top left, you have a little play button where you can actually build and run this in a simulator. And at the top here, you can select a simulator. So I've got the iPhone 14 Pro selected already. And if I hit the play button at the top left, you'll see that a simulator does pop up. A simulator basically just simulates an iPhone or you know an iPad, whatever you want to run your app on. So here is our app. You can see it in light mode and dark mode. And to change that, you can hit Command Shift A. So cool, let's actually start coding. We're gonna actually build something. So what are we going to build today? We already saw in the beginning of the video, we're going to build an app where we have a picker and we can select an emoji. We're going to talk through how to do that as well as I'm going to show you how you can change the picker style so you can get a variety of different looks. So we have this content view thing here, which is of type view. And inside of here, we're going to start just building. And that's the best way to learn this stuff. So we're going to just delete everything in here and we're just going to have this body thing. I will also call out that on line 16 downwards, this content view preview is basically what renders this thing on the right. So we're not going to mess with this. We'll leave that as is. 
You'll see when I deleted that code here, it yelled at me, and that's because, you know, yelling at me meaning we have these errors, and that's because we need to put something in here. So I'm gonna have some text show up, which will basically just be a text, and I'm gonna pass in a string, and we're gonna say, hello world. All right, so on our canvas, we're gonna hit the little refresh button on the top right of this iPhone, and we'll see hello world pop up on the right. So this is kind of the classic application that everyone builds, not that great, we can do better. So let's start to think about how we want to show our uh, emoji. Well, first things first, we need to define a you know definitive list of a few emojis we wanna deal with. And I'm gonna do that up here in something called an enum. And I wanna call this enum an emoji and put these curlies here. An enum, otherwise known as an enumeration, is basically a list of cases that you can define and pick from. So you can imagine if you have a list of cases of what an airplane can do, it could be flying, it could be taxiing, it could be stopped, um, it could be landing. So you have a definitive list. So similarly for our enum of emoji, we're gonna have some cases. So I'm gonna say case, and we're gonna actually put a emoji directly in here. The way we're gonna be able to do this is by hitting control command space on your keyboard and it'll open up this emoji uh, picker type thing on your Mac. And I've got my recent emojis here, but you can certainly, you know, pick um, any emoji on the left. We've got, you know, all the different categories. So I'm just gonna pick a few emojis. Let's pick a couple of these cool ones that I've got, you know, being used of late. And I will close this panel. And just make sure to stick a comma between each of these, because we do want to comma separate them. And we've got four here, and I guess that that's a good place to start. So awesome, so now what we wanna do in our view down here to get an emoji to show up is instead of using, you know, hello world, we're gonna say that we have a reference to an emoji. So I'll say var uh, selection, you can call it whatever you want, will be an emoji and we're gonna hit the dot and we're gonna say we want this emoji. Now what we're going to do up here on our emoji is say that we want a string representation of the emoji such that we can render it on the screen. So cool, now that we've got that, we're gonna say selection.rawValue, and if you refresh your preview on the right, you should see your emoji show up. Now it's a little small, so we're gonna make it bigger. Now because this is a text label, even though emojis are kind of visually a picture because we can actually control the font size, we're gonna use something called a modifier, which allows you to modify the look and feel of something, and there's several of them, but the one we care about is font. And we're gonna use the system font, and we wanna use the one with the size of, let's say, let's try 150. Make it a little large, and I think it's looking a whole lot better. We got that nice, exciting party emoji because we're building our first app. So cool, so we're doing pretty good here. Now, something that'd be a little cooler is not only do we want to just see you know, a single emoji, we wanna be able to change this thing. And before we write more code to learn how to change it, I wanna draw your attention to the canvas on the right-hand side, particularly to the bottom of it. There are a few icons down here, and you can actually hit this one in the middle, and it opens up this little panel, and you can run your app in this canvas directly in other you know, kind of variants. So I like developing my particular app in dark mode. So I'm gonna enable this color scheme uh, little switch here, and we're going to leave it in dark appearance. So I think this looks a little nicer. It's a little easier on the eyes as well when you're you know, writing code all day. So just a little tidbit of information there. So now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing I wanna do is have a way to uh, make a selection from a number of these emojis that we have up here, such that it changes what's shown. So we're gonna take this text label and I'm gonna put it inside of a VStack. So if I just copy and paste this uh, text a few times, you'll notice and it'll be very obvious what a VStack does. The name is kind of self-explanatory, but it basically helps you vertically stack multiple UI elements, multiple things you see on the screen. So instead of having that label copy and pasted a bunch of times, we're gonna use what's known as a picker. And the picker is gonna take a title, or we're gonna say select emoji. It's gonna take a binding, which is a little bit of a confusing concept, so bear with me. I'm gonna use our selection up here, but I'm going to prefix this with an at sign and the word state. And over here we can say dollar 
the dollar sign, whoops, that's not the dollar, the dollar sign and selection. And we're gonna have some content here and we'll take care of the content first and then I will explain what these, this dollar state business thing is. So in our picker, what we want to do is we basically wanna show all the options we have defined in our enum up here. So how do we loop over this? Cause it would be kind of silly if we had, let's say like a, like 40 or 50 emojis to have to copy and paste every single one. Seems a little, a little redundant. We can say that this enum is what's known as case iterable. Basically we can loop over every case in here and the code can automatically just insert that into our picker. So what we're gonna do, and it kind of sounds like English when you start uh, just typing it out. So it'll be for each of every case in our enum, so emoji dot all cases, where the ID, the unique identifier is self. We're gonna say we want to render that emoji in a string format. Now, let me explain this code here because it gets a little confusing. So we're saying for each of the cases of emoji, where ID is self, basically the unique identifier of each case will be the case itself. You don't have to understand this part too much. We want to render a label with that emoji's string representation. Now, on the right hand side, you'll see we have this little drop down looking thing. So I can click it and it actually opens up a, uh, an option here. Now, what you'll notice if I go ahead and select a different option, boom, look at that. Our label actually changed. How on earth is it changing? So let me explain this dollar selection thing and the state up here. So SwiftUI is what's known as a declarative framework. What that means is we can say that whenever some part of our data changes, we should have our user interface update automatically. So a state basically marks this selection as a special piece of data. And it tells our view here, hey, whenever this thing changes, we may or may not need to redraw our view, basically update what we show to the user. In our picker, we've said the selection is a reference to this binding, this state of selection. So whenever the user picks something, we basically go and assign this and it in turn updates our entire view. So if you actually open this up, you'll notice there's a little check mark next to the laughing emoji because our picker knows this is the thing that's selected. So of course I could pick any of these and it goes and updates our view. So we're pretty close to what our first app is gonna be. We do have a little bit more work to do, so let's continue. Now, right now, our uh, picker here is pretty cool. It's like this kind of drop down or drop up, I should say, or open up menu. There are a couple different picker styles, and I previously mentioned we added a font here on this label, and it's called a modifier. And I also mentioned there's several kinds of modifiers. So let's take a look at another modifier. So we have a variety of picker styles that we can apply to the picker. You'll notice this curly brace, this block here is for the picker, and then we can say dot picker style. And if we just press the dot, you'll see a drop down open up and it kind of shows you what's available to you. So I wanna say the one we have uh, right now showing up is the menu. I'm gonna change it to segmented and you'll see what happens. So now we have this kind of slider type thing on the right hand side, and I personally like this a little better. And all we did is we just modified the uh, picker style property here, this view modifier. We said, show the segmented version of this. Now, one thing you might be wondering is, well, like how the heck do I know what segmented is? Um, I will mention that all of this stuff is documented. Apple writes fairly good documentation. And a lot of this work is kind of just playing it by ear and seeing what it looks like. So cool, let's add one more modifier onto this entire vertical stack. You'll notice our picker is kind of flush on the edges of the screen, like it's touching the right and left, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of padding. And what that's gonna do is you'll see that it just kind of added a little bit of space on the right and left there. Um, if I change this back to uh, light mode, you'll notice it more obviously, given the color won't blend in. So now we do have a little bit of space between our actual picker element here, as well as the edge of the screen. So we're in pretty good shape. Let's wrap up by adding a title to the top of our screen here. The way we can accomplish that is uh, twofold. One, we need to take this entire vertical stack and cut it, so Command X. Next, we're gonna add in a navigation stack, or you can also add in a navigation view, either or perfectly okay. I'm gonna stick with the view. 
and we will add another modifier onto this VStack and it's going to be a navigation title. And I will title this emoji lovers with an exclamation mark. And just like that, you'll see it appear on the right. Now this is a canvas and while this is giving us live updates to our app and we can actually even interact with it, um, we are going to run it in a simulator just to see how it looks like on our iPhone over here. So cool, let's see, we start off with this emoji, we can change it to the points down, we can change it to the laughing emoji. Maybe we're going to the moon with our, uh, our crypto this year, maybe we're gonna be investing in 2023, so we're gonna go to the moon with this rocket ship. But that's basically your very first app that you can actually run and play with. So congrats if you've made it this far. I hope I actually explained all the code we wrote. If not, I am gonna do a recap right now. If you're into iOS, if you wanna to learn to build apps, more complex apps, things like Twitter, Instagram, you know, the bigger apps, this channel focuses a lot on that. So do subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And of course, hit that like button. It helps out tremendously. So before we wrap up, a quick recap here. We created a way to list out our emojis. So we used what's known as an enum or enumeration. We titled it emoji. You can call this literally whatever you want. We said that our emoji here is of raw uh, value type string. In other words, I can get a string representation of each of our cases, and that's important so we can show it in a label. Then we added case iterable, which is what's known as a protocol, but we don't need to go too, too deep into that. But essentially what this lets us do is it lets us loop over all of our options in this enum such that we can put it in our picker. Then we extended our view here, and the first thing we have in here is our selection, which is a special, special type of data, which we marked as at state. State and bindings, which are very closely related, basically tell your view to update when a piece of data has changed. In our body here for the view, we have an outer navigation view, which we leverage to add a title for this entire screen. Inside of that, we have a vertical stack container with two elements inside of it. The first one is our uh, label, which is known as a text. And what we're showing is the current selection's raw value. Raw value will just give you the string variant of our emoji from the enum up there. And we just used a font modifier to make this guy a little larger. Below that, we've got a picker. In that picker, we have a nice title. We passed in that state with a, as a binding. So here we use dollar. And inside the picker, instead of having to list out every emoji case manually, which we certainly could do, we're being a little more intelligent about it and looping over every case in emoji, where ID is self, basically unique identifier of each of those uh, cases will be the case itself. And we're saying, hey, show a label with the emoji string representation, i.e. raw value for the picker. And the reason this is smart is you'll notice if I actually add or remove something from our uh, enum up there, and if I refresh this on the right hand side, we'll actually see, let me get rid of that extra comma. If we give this a run and we'll see on the right that our picker on the screen actually automatically updated. So by using the for each and case iterable, it actually handles um, the case where we want to go and add or remove cases in the enum. So cool, we also looked at the picker style. We had the menu drop down one in the beginning. We now have segmented. And down here, like I mentioned, this is basically what helps you see the preview on the right hand side. So if I delete it, you'll see that it does disappear. So that's kind of important to see as you build. So just leave that, uh, leave that piece as is. So there you have it. You've built your very first app. It's actually quite exciting. I remember building my very first app. So definitely give yourself a round of applause, even though it is rather simple. It's still an accomplishment nonetheless. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe if you're interested in learning more. Comment, let me know if you built your app, if you have any questions, and I will hopefully see you guys in another video.